Running gives me everything in my life. It gives me my religion, nature, my husband, but most of all, it gives me me. That's what I love most about it. I feel like I can do anything. There was a very defining moment, the moment I knew I was going to run a marathon. And that was the moment my coach, who had said he believed so much in my ability, told me that a woman couldn't run the marathon distance. He said, if you showed me in practice that you could run a marathon, I would be the first person to take you. I was so excited. You know, I had a coach, I had a dream, I had a goal. I had no idea that I was going to be making history. It was not my intention. I was proud of myself. I was proud of myself for being a woman and officially registering. And I was proud of myself because I knew I was going to be able to finish. We piled into the starting line and down the street we went. Then the official's bus came alongside of us and on this official's bus was the race director and he was a feisty Scotsman named Jock Semple. The journalists on the bus and the officials were teasing him and saying, there's a girl in your race, she's gotten numbers and he lost his temper. He was furious. He felt that somebody had tricked him into letting this girl run the race. And he jumped from the truck and ran down the street and attacked me like this and screamed at me, get the hell out of my race and give me those numbers. And my big boyfriend, who was running alongside, hit the official and sent him out of the race. And I remember turning to my coach and saying, no matter what happens, I'm going to finish this race even on my hands and my knees if I have to. I knew what I wanted to do, which was to create opportunities for women, to become a better athlete, and to show the world that women could really do this. For five years after Jock Semple attacked me, we were at daggers drawn, like this. But I forgave him in the race. Do you know, life is too short not to forgive. And also, how could you not love somebody? who changed your life so fundamentally and made that terrible thing a wonderful thing and gave the world one of the greatest photographs of the women's rights movement. This number, which was for 45 years of my life, three digits. Suddenly, people began writing to me and saying, this number makes me feel powerful. And it suddenly occurred to me, Everybody in the world has told you're not good enough or you don't belong or you're the wrong race or religion or you're too fat or too slow, you don't count. And they run and they feel fearless and they know they can do anything. And that's why this number became important to them. I believe now my legacy is going to be 261 Fearless and changing women's lives. I will continue to do that until I fall off the face of the earth. But there's another legacy and that's a legacy of aging. People talk about older people the way they talked about women 50 years ago. They think we're too fragile, too frail. When in fact, the more you do, the more you can do. My sense of this is that we all can do much more than we ever believed we could. And this is one of the most beautiful things to give to women who never understood themselves physically. And here they are actively pushing themselves beyond whatever they previously believed they could do. They can do it and it changes everything.